All right, so hello and welcome to my home, the beautiful city of Newcastle upon Tyne. So we're here on the quayside, which is one of the most iconic spots in Newcastle. But before we get started today, I'm going to give you a quick little introduction. So if you've watched my other videos, you'll know I love to catch cheap flights and explore new places. And I've been lucky enough to visit some beautiful spots such as Tallinn, the snow capital of Europe, and other stunning cities like Gdansk in Poland, Madrid and Riga. And then I thought, why not make a similar video for Newcastle? So in this video, I'm going to be taking you around my city, showing you what there is to see and do, and hopefully we'll both learn a thing or two along the way. But anyway, it's time to get exploring, let's go and have a wonder. Alright, so we're going to begin our little tour of Newcastle, right here on the quayside, one of the most iconic and definitely most beautiful spots in all of Newcastle. And we've got seven bridges, we've got six that way and one that way. And that one right there, the Tyne Bridge, that's home right there for many, many Geordies. And if I turn around, we've got the seventh and the newest bridge. We've got the Millennium Bridge, which I believe was the world's first tilting bridge. And when it closes, it blinks like an eye. And it's also worth mentioning the Baltic, which is right behind the Millennium Bridge. There's a free viewing platform quite high up, so I definitely recommend going to check that out for some great views over the quayside. So the quayside here is a beautiful little spot to go for a walk through the day or at night when it's all lit up. And it's fair to say that the River Tyne here played a key role in putting Newcastle on the map, especially throughout the Industrial Revolution when you had things like the export of coal, uh, steel and shipbuilding as well, which were like the key industries in Newcastle. But anyway, what we're probably going to do now is we're going to head up over that way into the city centre. So, it's time to leave the iconic and historically rich riverside and its beautiful bridges behind. And on the way, I get a small glimpse of neoclassical architecture which is abundant throughout the city. It's then under the homely Tyne Bridge, and demonstrating Newcastle's once industrial and engineering prowess, it was the world's largest single span bridge. And it sat tall and proud above its little and older friend, the Swing Bridge, which was the world's largest swing bridge of its time, thanks to local engineer and visionary, William Armstrong. And then coming away from the river, I walk past this old merchant's house, which perhaps gives a brief picture of what the quayside might have looked like in the 17th century. Anyway, it's time to leave the quayside behind and I start heading up the hill towards town. And here's a rooftop bar just in case you fancy a drink above the city, but make sure you book in advance. Alright, I'm leaving the quayside behind and working up towards the city centre of Newcastle. We've probably got the most beautiful street in the whole city, which is Grey Street. And if you've watched my other videos, you'll notice that around Eastern Europe there's loads of colour, whereas it's very different here. And uh, they've all got quite the same look and I'm guessing materials that are made from a sandstone and this was all built as part of major redevelopments in the late Georgian period in around the 1830s. Considered by some to be the best street in the UK, passing through the curving Georgian street, you'll notice each building boasts a different facade. And thankfully, as part of more modern regeneration projects, the buildings have been sandblasted to clean them from years and years of industry. And unfortunately, it is a little bit cloudy at the moment. I feel like it's been grey for about two months straight. But the nice thing is, in the summer, everything really brightens up. The city comes to life. And you see the sort of bars and restaurants you've got around there. People will be out having a drink. So yeah, in the summer, everything really does just liven up a bit. But then you see that tower there, that's pretty much right bang in the city centre. Grey's Monument, we're going to head up over that way and have a little explore around there. Then coming to the top of Grey Street is perhaps Newcastle's most beautiful building. The Theatre Royal which possesses a grandeur like no other, with its stunning portico and proud Greek pillars. And on another day when the sun's shining, you'll see it really brightens up and it looks even more majestic. And before we arrive right in the centre of the city, I take a detour to an absolute gem hidden in plain sight. Almost 120 years old is the Central Arcade, and it's one of those spots us locals probably don't appreciate and forget it's even there. From the exquisite tiling, mosaic flooring, cute lamps and arched glass roof, while walking through, I couldn't help but get lost in the past. It's only small, but there was something so enchanting about it, so I definitely recommend you take a wander through. Alright, so here we are, we have made it right into the city centre of Newcastle upon Tyne. You can see that big statue there, that is what we call Monument Locally, and it is the statue of Charles Earl Grey. And it's funny really, because walking around, you know, I've lived here my whole life, but actually when I look around and I like, take it all in, it really is a beautiful, beautiful place. As the very centre and the main meeting place of Newcastle, it was quite quiet on this early Friday morning, but I can promise you it'll certainly liven up by the night time with Newcastle being famous for its nightlife. Alright, there's still going to be plenty of things left to see in this video, but now we're going to be headed to one of the most important places in the whole city for us Geordies. Let's go. 
and on the way to this special special place I pass what we call Hippie Green but ironically it's now probably more full of druggies and local misfits and as I continue walking along I spot some strange murals which I've never noticed in my entire life so just when I was thinking of making this video and preparing and starting to do research it's funny really because I actually start to look around you know I'm in the city setting out nearly every day and there's a lot of Geordies who probably just don't pay attention to any of the stuff like this so we've got the old town walls here which were built in the late 13th century I believe so they've stood there for about 650 years and you just don't really appreciate that it's actually there and then you've got a nice little Chinese arch just there which uh, is the entrance into Chinatown which is kind of just behind here but more importantly like I said one of the most important things in the city right here we've got the beautiful beautiful St James's Park the home of Newcastle United and we've got the Gallagher end right here which is one of the best stands to be in as a Newcastle United fan and I'm pretty sure it was named because there was a gallows roughly around about here where people got hanged uh, but I thought I'd give you a little bit of an idea of what it's like as a Geordie, as a proud Newcastle fan, because football is so important for the people here, big part of our culture, but I thought I'd give you a little idea of what it's like in St. James's Park. Although there's very little chance you'll actually be able to get a ticket, it might be worth doing a stadium tour, a rooftop tour, or even just experience the sea of black and white on a match day. Anyway, moving on from football, there's also numerous free museums and galleries you may want to take a look in. So first of all, we'll check out the Discovery Museum, which I hadn't been in since I was about 10. Inside, you can learn a thing or two about the region's past and influence on a global scale. With inventions such as the incandescent light bulb, the Davy lamp designed to prevent explosions in mines, and other pioneers such as George Stevenson and his son Robert, who were instrumental in inventing the locomotive train and the development of public railways across England. And I found out that Newcastle also boasts some other impressive engineering feats, like the Tabinia, the first steam turbine boat which demonstrated never before seen speeds at a Navy review, and later revolutionised the Royal Navy fleet. Oh, and this magnificent ship, the Mauritania, among many others were also built on the Tyne. I really found it fascinating and can't help but feel proud about how Newcastle has left its mark on the world. And from here, moving on to the next museum, I pass the Newcastle University campus, which has this lovely red brick building, and then make it to the Hancock Museum. Again, this one is completely free, and you can indulge yourself in the magnificent history of things like the famous Hadrian's Wall. And they also have a pretty cool selection of animal exhibits which you can look at and enjoy. And I round off what's been a pretty long day exploring with another aimless wonder. I find myself passing by a lovely World War I monument and then onto Newcastle's High Street, Northumberland Street, where you also have the modern shopping centre Eldon Square. But hey, you can find shops everywhere and there's much more to this city than just shopping. And to round off the day nicely, I end up at the bottom of Northumberland Street and I check out the Lang Art Gallery and it's took me 23 years to discover it. Again, it was free and there was some fantastic artwork, but after a long day, it's time to head back and explore another day. Alright, so good morning. I'm up nice and early this morning and I did not expect this. Wow, what a lovely, lovely surprise. But anyway, we've got plenty more things to see and do today. Let's go. Alright, so good morning. We're starting again in the city centre. We've got Monument just by me right here, but I haven't seen snow in the city centre for absolutely years but anyway the plan is we're going to head down over that way through Granger Town and we've still got loads of things left to see today and later on I've got a lovely little surprise for you even you Geordies so stay along and stay tuned for that. There is still loads yet to explore today but we begin by heading away from Grey's Monument and then wandering down Granger Street and you can also find Granger Market here which impressively was once the largest market in the country. I'd recommend you add it to your list of things to do and it's also a great spot to try some street food, browse through some of the local independent stores, and there is even the first and smallest Marks and & Spencers, and it still has its original sign from 1895. Alright, so just leaving Granger Street uh, behind, I kind of touched upon it a little bit, but Newcastle is also famous. We've got a massive reputation for being a party city, so we've got a great nightlife. And right here in the big market, there's loads of clubs and bars, but the whole city is absolutely full. So uh, that's also a big appeal for a lot of people. 
but right here this used to be a lively market um, and I think it's named big with a double G because uh, there was a lot of barley sold and the barley was called big and a nice little touch let's see if I can find it on the benches here there's a uh, something in green excuse the pun but it's like a little bit of green which I thought's a nice touch to uh, sort of commemorate that market but, uh, yeah we're gonna he keep heading over that way and actually just before we move on I thought I'd show you a couple of pubs nearby perhaps you might want to visit Newcastle's oldest the old George or the recently renovated miniature bar converted from Victorian toilets anyway I carry on walking down the bottom end of Granger Street and unlike normal commuters in their home city I decide to observe what's above me and find there are some beautiful designs on the roofs before I reach one of Newcastle's finest buildings, Central Station. So just walking through here behind me we've got the beautiful Central Station which we'll go to in a minute but we've also got this strange sideways man, I've got no idea why he's there but I bet a fair few drunk people have tried to start a fight with him. Alright so here we are anyway, we've got Central Station which is like the main train station in Newcastle, it's a big beautiful building. And you can see that it's kind of got like Roman like pillars and the arches as well, it's lovely. Uh, but for now we're going to pass through over that way, there's still a few things left to see. Then just along from the Grand Central Station, you can find a monument paying tribute to the famous George Stevenson, who hopefully you remember from earlier. I carry on walking by and also couldn't help but tell you about another special spot which most tourists will miss. So just past the Stevenson Monument and on the right you can find the Lytton Phil, or properly known as the Literary and Philosophical Society. It was formed 230 years ago, and thanks to them, here now stands the largest independent library outside of London. Anyone can just wander in and take a look inside, and this is even where George Stevenson and Joseph Swan demonstrated their inventions, the Davy Lamp, and the incandescent light bulb which I told you about earlier. Moving on, I head along Collingwood Street, which has some of the higher end bars and clubs, and at the other end, there is another must-see spot. All right, and now I think I've got to tell you a confession. So right behind me here, we've got St. Nicholas's or Newcastle Cathedral. And I've lived here my whole life and I have never been in once. And apparently it's lovely, so let's go in and take a look. Just outside is this imposing monument dedicated to Queen Victoria. And upon entering the church, I was surprised by its archaic yet timeless aura. There was a medieval like wooden roof with gorgeous stone pillars creating a series of arches but really bringing the cathedral to life were perhaps the most beautiful stained glass windows I have ever seen. And other parts of the church were decorated with more intricate detail and decoration. And I can't believe that I've walked past this cathedral hundreds of times and never thought to look inside. So make sure that if you're passing by, head in and take a look inside. Uh, I'm just leaving the cathedral behind and I've got another lovely little fact for you. So just behind me here, we have got Mosley Street or Mosley Street and I bet all these people who walk past here don't know that this was the first public street in the world to be lit by the locally invented incandescent light bulb. So I just find it absolutely fascinating that all this history is right here in Newcastle and I never knew until like a week ago. But I'm going to head towards the castle now. And if you're like me as well, you might be wondering why Newcastle. It's called Newcastle. So when this was built in about 1180, I believe, they clearly weren't very creative and they just called it Newcastle. And so I'm guessing the town just sort of adopted the name after that. But anyway, we're going to head inside and take a look. And I believe you can also get up the top and hopefully there's some nice views. But anyway, let's go and take a closer look. And believe it or not, it's been about 16 years since I last came up these steps with my grandparents. It's crazy how when you live somewhere your whole life, it's so easy for it all to just blow into the background. Anyway, it was £10.20, which I couldn't believe. But let's carry on up the steps and take a look inside. Upon entering, you can obviously learn a bit of history about the castle. But really, I just want to see the views overlooking the city. But first, I got lost in the surprising amount of rooms within the castle, and it even had a really cool great hall. But to be honest, my attention span was running thin by now, so it's time to head up to the main reason I came. That means climbing up the stairs of this beautifully polished stone staircase, which finally brings me up to the best views in the whole of Newcastle. Alright, so we've just got to the top now. It cost me £10, which is expensive, but check these views out. Was it worth it? I think so. This is the best view you'll get of the city in Newcastle. So just for this alone, I'd recommend coming to the castle, coming to the top. And then right behind me here, you can see we've got some great views looking down at the St. Nicholas's Cathedral, which we've just been in. And of course, the beloved St. James's Park. And also where the castle is now, 
the Romans had like a fort almost 2,000 years ago. And then I believe as well, the Romans also built the first bridge on the Tyne. So just where the swing bridge is, they made the first bridge called Pons Alias, which stretched over that part of the Tyne there. Then what better way to finish off another long morning exploring than just enjoying the views? And if you've got a good memory, you'll remember I told you there would be a lovely surprise at the end of this video. So under this city, some of the very streets we've wandered through is an old dark tunnel. Only a 20 minute walk from the city centre, you can pay to do a tour of the underground Victoria Tunnel. So that's what we'll be doing this evening. Heading down to Oosburn where the tour begins, I reach the Victoria Tunnel tours. It only costs £12 for a two hour tour and I can't wait to explore inside. All right, so here we go, helmets on. Time to explore, I'm excited to see what's inside. Around 80 years after actual air raid sirens would have rung, we head inside where thousands of locals would have fled during the Second World War. But interestingly enough, the history of this tunnel goes way further back than that. Passing through each segment, we weaved in and out of these blast walls which prevented any explosions from travelling through and killing all of those seeking refuge within it. But long before it was used as an air raid shelter, this tunnel was made for the transport of coal from one of Newcastle's collieries and down to the Tyne to be shipped across the world. And as you can see, without torchlight, or back then, candlelight, the tunnel is completely blacked out and eerily quiet. Originally opened in 1835 and spanning two and a half miles, the tunnel was built using a total of over two million bricks. Walking through a literal tunnel of history, it really was a fascinating experience. And to think, like most Geordies, I had absolutely no idea this was right underneath the very streets we walk every day. All right, so I'm just back in the city centre. The snow's falling again, but I tell you what, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed that tour. So shout out to Erica and Mal. Really good, I'd 100% recommend it. I'll leave a link down in the description below. But anyway, I really hoped you enjoyed exploring my city with me. So get yourself along here, come and visit the tune. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you next time. Adios. And if you enjoyed exploring my city with me, I think you'll love joining me on my other adventures. So feel free to hit that subscribe button and visit some other incredible places with me, like Gdansk, Madrid, Wrocław, Riga, Tallinn or Prague. And I also cannot wait to bring you on my next adventure, so here's a little sneak peek. See you later!